Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is Jeremy Smith. Recently, Sony's brand new A93 became available. And uh, unless you guys have been like living under a rock, I mean, you, I'm sure you've certainly heard about this camera. Everyone's been talking about its new global shutter sensor design and uh, all the implications of that. Uh, we know that this gives us the ability to sync with flash at uh, pretty much any shutter speed. Um, and everyone's been talking about the ability to shoot you know, very high frame rates. This camera does 24 megapixel raw files at up to 120 frames per second and all these things. But with this new global shutter sensor technology, people became very concerned about the image quality because uh, basically that global shutter sensor design means that there's a lot more complex wiring on the image sensor and that results in less space for light to be gathered. And this is why we have the ISO starting at 250 on this body. Uh, now, I've got a lot of things to test on this camera. Uh, it's pretty awesome so far. There are a lot of ergonomic changes that I'll show you guys in just a moment as well. Um, there, there's a lot of, I have a lot of thoughts about that too. So we'll look at that in just a moment. But the main thing that I went to test was how this camera actually perform, performed image quality wise. I wanted to see if that global shutter design would compromise our image quality in any way. So here we have some images shot with this new A93 and also with the A1 and the A92. And I just kind of want to give a little bit of a brief impression of how the camera handles high ISO shooting. So with that being said, this is kind of where we start. This is a ISO 250. And let's just see here. Okay, let me go over to this one. Okay, there's our compare view there. Now we've got both these shots taken at uh, ISO 250. And let's just zoom in. We have our A92 on the right and the A93 on the left. And uh, I, pardon me guys, some of these frames are not perfectly aligned, but I think we still get a general idea of how everything looks. I'm um, at 250 ISO, not really a big deal going on here. Pretty straightforward kind of stuff. Anyways, let's go ahead and go a bit higher than this. I'm not going to go through every single stop. We're going to skip a few. So this video won't be an eternity long. Okay, here we are at 800 ISO. We'll zoom in a bit. Hmm. Not a big difference, of course. Let's see. Let's go to 200%. Now, guys, if we're having to zoom into 200%, you know what that means. <laughs> it means we're seriously having to get our pixel peep on. And, of course, we're looking at all these images on 4K display. Uh, let's see here. I don't see a very, very significant difference. Now, whenever I'm shooting with uh, the latest Sony bodies, I prefer to shoot in the lossless compressed RAW format. I did not do that this time because, unfortunately, the A92 does not offer lossless compressed RAW. And, of course, I'm not going to shoot compressed RAW and limit the data in the file. So all these images are shot in the uncompressed RAW setting. So that way things are nice and fair. Uh, yeah, I don't really see a huge difference here. Um, okay, let's go a bit higher. We're going to go, let's go to 1600 ISO. All right, 1600 ISO, same thing. Zoom in again. These images are taken in a dark room, by the way. Uh, well, at least a dimly lit room because, you know, high ISO noise is not generated just by being at high ISO. It's also generated by a lack of light. So in these photographs, we actually do have them shot in a dimly lit environment where there is a bit of a lack of light. Uh, both... Um, Cameras were shot with Sony's excellent 50mm 1.4G Master lens. Hmm. Yep, I am not seeing much of a difference here. Okay, let's go up. We're going to skip a couple. Let's go all the way up to 6400 ISO now. All right, here we are at 6400 ISO. Now, you guys will, you guys might notice a little bit of a difference in the exposure on the A92 uh, at the top of the frame. This is because this camera does not have, uh, of course, it doesn't have a global shutter. It's very fast. Uh, it's a very fast readout, but uh, this room is lit by some fluorescent lights. So the A9 
2 started to capture a little bit of flicker as we started to increase the shutter speed. But of course, the A93 does not have that going on with its fancy new global shutter sensor tech. All right, let's see here. Hmm. Let's go on into these shadows here. Well, yeah, I'm not really seeing anything. Despite all the folks on the internet claiming that Sony was compromising image quality a lot by going to a global shutter sensor design, we do see a slightly more coarse noise pattern out of the A93, but when you consider what type of um, new abilities you're getting out of this sensor design, I think this slight difference in image quality is worth the trade-off. I could go off on a long tangent about that, but I'm not going to. Okay, let's go on up to another stop here. 12,800 ISO. And ISO, I very rarely find myself shooting at. Usually for me, I top out somewhere around eight to 10,000. And that's when I'm shooting an extremely low light event and I want to get candid photographs. I find myself shooting at like, you know, F1.2 or F1.8 and uh, around 8,000 ISO that happens occasionally. But for me, usually, usually for an event or so, I'm usually stopping at around 32 to 6,400 ISO. So 12,800 is a place I just simply never go for the most part. But anyways, even at this high ISO, if we come over here, you can kind of see how there's definitely a more granular, um, well, not granular, granular, but there's a more coarse sort of noise pattern out of the A93. But not a big deal as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, so you can kind of see that a little bit, but not a big deal. All right, let's go on up to the last one I have here. This is 25,000 ISO. I stopped at 25,000 because um, that's the highest you can go with the electronic shutter on the A92. But uh, yeah, and yet it's worth mentioning that yes, the A92 was in electronic shutter mode and not in mechanical. Okay, yeah, so a little bit more. Again, I'm not terribly concerned about this. Um, I did take some images also with the A1 just to compare. So let's just kind of go over here to some of these A1 shots. And this is the same ISO. Now the A1, while this is a topic for an entire video all to its own, this is not exactly a fair comparison because at 200% we're looking at the A1 images closer. Anyways, that's a whole nother topic. This whole myth about higher uh, resolution cameras producing more noise is not always true. Again, topic for another video. I was curious about how the A1 compared just because the A1 is the primary camera that I use these days. So, yeah, uh, again, I don't really see anything to be concerned about here. Now, one other thing I want to do is just kind of see how the uh, A93 images would do whenever they are edited a little bit. You know, how those shadows look if we push them a little. So, let's see. Let's go to the 6400 ISO shot. And we're going to come over here. We're going to push these shadows a bit. I'm going to go ahead. I tried this earlier. And I just push the shadows up by 50 points here like this. Do the same thing with the A92. And let's do a little comparison here. Comparison. There we go. And we'll zoom in again. So there we are. So yeah, if we push the shadows, the shadows are definitely a little noisier on the A93. But I think it's worth the trade-off. This, this kind of reminds me of when the first A9 uh, debuted with that electronic shutter, with that, uh, you know, with that uh, uh, stack sensor design, the first of its kind in full frame. And you saw an image quality trade-off there. But after the A9 II came out, it was already way better than the A9. And by the time the A1 came out, there was absolutely no difference between the mechanical shutter. I mean, I think there's about three tenths of a stop, two tenths of a stop difference. It's so small, it's not even worth uh, thinking about anymore. And I'm sure that as time goes on, 
We'll see the same thing with the A93 style global shoulder sensor. We'll get to the point where there won't be any image quality difference whatsoever. But even where we are right now, I'm not concerned about the trade-off. Like when you consider the implications of what this tech can give us in terms of flash sync speed, of course for me, that's the main thing I'm thinking about. So I think it's a worthy trade-off. That's my initial assessment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a few of the physical things I've noticed uh, on the camera that are different. And um, But of course, in the future, there will be more videos. We'll talk about flash, and there's so many other things to talk about on this camera. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the physical differences that I noticed for now. And uh, we'll keep this video from being just too long. Taking a closer look at the Sony A93 body, the first thing you guys will notice is that we definitely have some different ergonomics here. If we pick up the camera here, you guys will notice how now we have the side of the, uh, or the rather, or rather the top of the camera here, that's shaped quite a bit different. This shutter button is angled down, so it's much, much easier to be able to sort of like reach the shutter release button. Another thing that I thought was interesting too is that these uh, C1 and C2 buttons are now raised up but uh, they're not quite at the same level which is kind of interesting one of them is actually a little bit higher the c2 button is a bit higher than the c1 so that way you have some extra distinction between both buttons and uh yeah it feels really, really nice and yeah that little bit of an angled uh area there makes a difference the whole grip is a lot more rounded so it definitely fits in hand much better than some of the previous sony bodies we see that we have this customizable exposure comp dial, which first debuted on the A7 IV, so it's nice to see that carry over. One other thing I thought was interesting was that on some of the uh, new Sony bodies like the A7R5, the record button made its way on top of the camera, but on this one, it's still set up just like on the A1 where the record button is on the rear. So that tells us that this camera is still primarily designed for still shooting. Of course, we do have that new screen design from the a7r5 where we have the ability to do the whole tilt screen or we can actually flip it out and rotate it so we get that new screen design that's something that is certainly no surprise i expect that to be standard on the higher end sony bodies going forward so that's very very nice as well we also have a little bit of a difference under here that i noticed um, this bottom plate's different from the other sony bodies it looks different than the a1 for example and it looks different than the A7R5 in the sense that that tripod socket area seems to be on its own little thing. So that seems like a, it seems like them addressing some repairability perhaps because sometimes photographers damage this socket. It looks like it would be easier to, to actually swap that out uh, perhaps. So that's kind of interesting as well. In the menus on this camera, there's a few things that I noticed. Uh, yes, there's a lot of new functionality in here. But there are some things that I thought were interesting that I haven't played with. Like, for example, there is this composite raw setting that I thought was pretty cool. Haven't played with this yet, but basically it looks like it does some type of some type of multi-frame uh, noise reduction in camera. So that's certainly interesting. As we just saw, there's really not much of a noise penalty for this camera's new sensor design. But now it looks like Sony, they have something here in camera to... Uh, further address any noise concerns, so I'll have to play with that. There's also this option in here too that says release lag start display. So basically like on Sony bodies, sometimes they take a little longer to start up. Uh, the A1 boots up very quickly, but in some situations it seems like it goes through some additional processes and that take it a bit longer to turn on. So it looks like you can kind of prioritize when you want the camera to basically start as fast as possible so i thought that was interesting i might have to play with that a little bit too and <clears throat> something else that i noticed was actually let's see here shooting display something else i noticed that was interesting is over in our customization so when you go to customization if you're customizing your keys it gives you this message now that basically lets you know that if you're in this uh, option and you want to say customize this C4 button, if you just hit it, it goes straight to it. Or if you hit C3, it goes straight to it. Or if you hit the record button, it goes straight to it. Or if you hit C2 or any of the buttons, you can go straight to that option. So that's pretty cool. That way you don't have to necessarily sort of like hunt through this whole list to find what you're trying to customize. You can just hit the button and it goes 
it goes to it straight away just like that. So that's pretty cool too. Of course, speaking of customization, <clears throat> we do have that new C5 button down there. That C5 button basically is like a turbo button on old school computers. So if you're shooting along at a certain frame rate, like if you have it set to, if you have it set to low or high or whatever it is up here, and you're shooting at 15 or 20 or 30 frames a second, and you want to kick into that 120 frame a second burst, you basically just come in here and you hold this C5 button. Of course, this C5 button can be customized for other things too. But uh, yeah, definitely some pretty cool stuff. Cart slot configuration on this camera is the same as an A1. It's uh, dual UHS-2 slash <clears throat> CF Express A. So all that's the same. But uh, anyways, no doubt, this is just a kind of a quick first hands-on look with some initial thoughts and some initial image quality assessments. We'll definitely be doing more testing on this camera very, very soon. I certainly want to see how this camera will handle things like uh, flash. You know, that's the biggest thing. I want to see how that um, ability to sync with flash at very high shutter speeds pans out. And of course, we'll have to do some more, uh, we'll have to do some action testing, even though I'm not much of an action photographer. I want to see how that handles too. And if there's anything else that you guys would like to see me test, definitely write me in the comments below. And certainly don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see all the updates. And uh, come on guys, let's try to, let's try to defeat the nefarious algorithm. And uh, give me some thumbs up so that way we can get this video bumped up a bit higher. Anyways guys, until next time, this is Jeremy Smith signing off.